Hello and welcome to my channel. This is a walkthrough video where I will show you step by step how particles can manipulate and modulate your patterns into a playful complex results. We going to start by sending a clock to clock input, then we will send one trigger from this sequencer. The output from particles I'm sending it to our kick drum BDZ. You can see the LED from the channel 1 fader is showing our trigger input. If I rotate the encoder to number 4 it will give me 4 repetitions in 16 clock ticks. Now I bring it to 8 repetitions. Sixteen repetitions. We can continue until 128 repetitions. The global amount of repetitions is controlled by the encoder or CV input, but each slider can limit the repetitions, this will set the maximum amount of repetitions per channel. If we press the encoder we can set the distribution of the repetitions selected, this is where it starts to get interesting, by default the repetitions are distributed in 16 clock ticks, but we can adjust for example to 24 clock ticks, notice the repetitions resets when a trigger is present, this is very useful too to build our patterns. Now I'm removing the initial trigger so you can see the pattern is not resetting, and the repetitions finish at 24 clock ticks. We can listen to more patterns with more distribution options offered. Now let us listen to this explanation in a musical example. I will show you how in a musical concept repetitions, distribution, and resetting. I have a kicked drum for reference and on channel 4 I am sending triggers to make a bass line. Also, I am sending some external notes to my VCO. First of all, I will send 16 repetitions so you can hear the 16 notes used and I will send 8 repetitions so we can work with 8 notes too. So this is my sequence. I will send the notes to my VCO. I bring this to 8 repetitions, and then when I play with the reset then I can change the progression of the notes too. Because it is playing one note on, one note off, if I set my trigger in the first step will give me this result. But if I set the trigger in the next step I have this result. So now I can set some triggers in different steps to build different patterns. Now let us see what happens when we adjust the distribution of the repetitions. Suddenly it gets more exciting and the possibilities are wider. In this other example I am triggering different percussive elements, and I will just adjust the distribution of the repetitions selected so you can see the different options offered to jam with. The next control in the default menu is the shift input pot, this control as the name stands, will shift the channel to right, you can see I have triggers sent to channel 1, if I rotate to the first position the triggers from channel 1 will go to channel 2 where I have this tom sound, in the next position to channel 3 where I have my hi-hat, in the next position to the channel 4 where I have my plucky am sound. 
So you can manually shift all the channels or you can use CV input too which gives very interesting results. The last two stages will use clock input to shift the channels, forward or randomly but let me show you how they work with a musical example. We are using again a last percussive example with repetitions going on, so you can see how the shift input control will affect the pattern. If we shift the inputs to the next channel we have this result. Shifting two times we have this result. Shifting the inputs three times we have this result. Then we have these two options to choose from, forward and random. This option will shift the input sequenced by the clock input but you have the option to reset to any of the preview stages too. Let us start with the random, you can see the inputs have been shifted randomly, but we can have control over it too, by pressing the function button plus pressing the encoder we can select what position the sequence will shift when a trigger is received to the reset input jack. You can reset to position number 1, to position number 2, to position number 3 or position number 4, so this will give you control over the random, let me show you how to do it. Position number 1 is the first stage of the shift input control, so every time you send a trigger to reset input jack it will go to position number 1. I have filled all the steps from this channel too but they are muted. Let's unmute it. You can hear suddenly the pattern is not longer changing randomly and it is sounding like the first position of the shift control. Even if I rotate the shift input pot it won't affect because I'm resetting all the steps. Check what happens when I mute the channel again. You can hear is randomly shifting the inputs. This is a good way to have control to the random too. As an example I can decide any of the percussive elements they can sound any time I want even if it is changing randomly. I will remove all the triggers except the triggers used for my kick. I will match the reset triggers it to my kick drum original pattern to make sure I always have the kick drum where I decided. So now I have randomness but in these steps, I will have my original kick drum. If I add more triggers to my kick and make sure the reset inputs match my kick drum I can have control of it. Let's move now to the sub menus. By pressing the function plus the first button, we go to the gator feature. You can see the button is blinking briefly which means gator is disabled on those channels. By pressing the button we can enable the feature on each channel, and suddenly you can see the button is blinking with the slider closed at a clock input rate. When moving the slider up we can increase the divisions of the clock input to use the positive signal to mute the channel rhythmically synced with the division. You can see on the button LED the positive signal of the clock muting the triggers. Let's listen to this feature with a percussive example. You can see how my baseline is affected by the different clock divisions selected. Let's engage two more channels to the gator feature but we adjust the sliders differently. On every feature, the encoder or the CV input will set the global amount for all channels and the sliders will limit independently the value selected. We can send CV2 to adjust globally this type of variation.
Now let's move to the absorb feature, by pressing the function button plus button 4 we can access the feature absorb, you can see the letter A with two zeros which means absorb is at 100%, absorb feature will remove all the triggers happening by probability except the trigger input. If we set absorb to 50% this means there are 50% of chance of triggers occurring, but remember the trigger input will not be affected. I will bring absorb down and I will add more triggers so you can hear the effect happening, you can notice we can hear our main pattern and once in a while, some repetitions occur based on our repetition value and distribution selected before. Also if I set the global control to 100% with the encoder, I can adjust individually with the slider to reach the maximum value per channel, you can see when moving the slider the button will blink from fast to slow to completely off, this will help us remember in which value the slider was set last time. If we press a channel button this will lock the channel to 100% so adjusting with encoder or with CV input the effect will not affect the channel locked. This is very useful when you are modulating the other channels but you want some channels not to be affected. Let's see the absorb feature again with a musical example. I will add repetitions on these three channels. And then I press function plus button 3 to get to absorb menu. You can see when I bring the sliders down I will just listen to the original triggers but not the repetitions. So I start adjusting the sliders up a bit to have a low percentage of the repetitions happening. If I move this slider to the maximum you can hear all the repetitions, I can limit the channels too. Reach the maximum percentage desired and I can send CV to modulate the global amount of the absorb feature so you can hear the result of it. You can see if I look at this channel to 100% by pressing the button I will hear all the repetitions to my hi-hats and the modulation won't affect them. Sending CV to absorb to limit each channel separately can have dynamic variations results. Our last feature to check is probability. By pressing the function button and button 3 we can enter to probability feature. We have our kick drum with repetitions happening. I'll bring the slider down and you can notice the triggers are also been removed by probability similar to the absorb feature. But in this case, our trigger input also is affected by the effect. If I completely close the slider all the triggers will vanish. because we don't constantly have our original trigger input when the probability feature is acting our brain can't hold to a pattern and the result will tend to be more organic. Let me show you an example of this feature with our pattern used before, so I will bring these three channels to zero and you can see and hear all percussive elements from those channels have disappeared because the probability is equal to 0%, as soon as I increase the value from the slider you can see the button blinking telling us a bit or probability is applied and some triggers will appear by probability value selected. If I bring all the sliders to 100% then I will have all the repetitions but playing with the global amount by the encoder or CV input I can adjust the percentage of probability value to remove triggers. I can lock the kick drum to 100% by pressing the button so the effect won't affect it.
Also I can lock the snare drum to check the result. Probability is another option to variate our trigger patterns too. I've tried to explain every feature individually to show you their potential, but by combining them in different ways you can get really complex results, I hope this video will be helpful to the users who already have it and for those who want to know more about the module too. Thank you for watching and patch wisely.